The installation of tile roofs has experienced tremendous growth over the past several years. Tile manufacturers, most of which are members of the National Tile Roofing Manufacturers Association, produce a wide assortment of tiles. The NTRMA continues to be instrumental in this growth through the development of safe, uniform installation methods of concrete and clay roof tiles. Tiles have been attached with nails, screws, mortar, or two-component polyurethane froth foam, which have limitations. Nails and screws penetrate a roof deck, which present potential areas where the roof can leak. Tiles installed with nails on a 30-square home will have approximately 5,000 penetrations through the underlayment and deck. Mortar is a very labor-intensive, messy process. These methods can cause tile breakage during installation, resulting in increased costs. Another method is two-component froth foams dispensed through heavy, expensive equipment requiring regular adjustments. Failure to do so can produce off-ratio foam. These limitations have been addressed with the introduction of a new attachment method that offers superior fastening strength. Tile Bond Roof Tile Adhesive. Tile Bond is a portable, easy-to-use, one-component polyurethane adhesive. It doesn't require any cumbersome mixing equipment, ratio control devices, air compressors, or nitrogen bottles. Tile Bond is manufactured by the Construction Products Group of Flexible Products Company. America's largest independent polyurethane formulator. Flexible products polyurethanes are found in many everyday places, from vending machines to the space shuttle. Flexible Products Company is an active member of many professional roofing associations. Talbon was developed to exceed the strict requirements set forth by these professional associations. This instructional video will provide Talbon training and licensing information and proper application techniques. Tile bond can be used with low profile, medium profile, and high profile concrete tiles, clay tiles, and slate. This video will demonstrate a concrete tile installation as specified in Tile Bond's SB, CCI, PST, and ESI evaluation report number 9744. Please check your local building code to see if these application methods meet with their approval. During application, product temperature should be a minimum of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the ambient and surface temperatures should be at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Always be sure that the properly installed underlayment is free from debris, dirt, grease, oil, and standing water. A damp underlayment is acceptable. In extremely dry climates, mist the cap sheet with water to speed up the adhesive curing process. Tile bond should never be applied to fresh plastic roofing cement. When using tile bond, tile can be set at an incline of 212 and greater. For pitches above 612, up to and including 712, nail every third tile in every fifth course in addition to the adhesive. For pitches above 712, nail every tile or use horizontal batten strips in addition to the adhesive. Apply approved flashing cement to seal all nail penetrations. Check your local building code for any additional nailing requirements. Please refer to the anchor sheet fastening tables included with each kit for decking and underlayment requirements. The underlayment used in this video consists of a 30-pound mechanically attached anchor sheet, which complies with ASTM D226. The 90-pound mineral surface type 2 cap sheet complies with ASTM D249 and is set in a full mopping of type 4 asphalt. Other approved underlayment systems are listed in the current FRSA or NTRMA and South Florida Building Code System 3 installation manuals. After a building official has inspected and approved the deck, you're then ready to use tile bond. A tile bond kit includes the following. A cylinder with 23 pounds of tile bond adhesive. A tile bond dispenser with an 8-foot hose. Operating instructions and maintenance booklet. A 1.5 by 4 inch by 1 inch adhesive pad sample. Always wear gloves, suitable work clothes, and eyewear. Remove the tile bond cylinder from the carton. Shake vigorously for at least 15 seconds before using. Next, securely attach the dispenser assembly hose to the tank with a 9 16 open end wrench. With the cylinder upright, turn the valve counterclockwise half a turn. 
pull the trigger to fill the hose and dispenser with adhesive and dispense into a garbage bag. You may notice a small burst of air. Adjust the adhesive flow with the yellow cylinder valve. To increase the flow rate, turn the valve counterclockwise in quarter turn increments. Now you're ready to begin installing the tiles. Today we're on a roof with a metal eave closure. If your roof has a raised fascia, please refer to our operating instructions and maintenance booklet included in the kit. Tile bond adhesive pads are one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high, yes, except for the first pad of each tile in the first course. Apply a half inch wide by six inch long adhesive strip to the cap sheet at the butt of tile under the pan of the tile on the overlock side. Then place a one inch high by two inch wide by six inch long pressure treated wood starter strip into the adhesive to adhere it to the cap sheet. Dispense a larger one and a half inch wide by six inch long by one inch high pad directly onto the wood starter strip. This larger pad size helps withstand increased forces placed on the E tiles. Don't block the drainage holes with the adhesive. Maximize the contact area to the tiles pan portion by adjusting the starter strip and adhesive placement. Apply the second pad about one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high directly onto the cap sheet, diagonally across from the first pad. Be sure that the anchor lug and pan portion are embedded in the adhesive. Apply the first adhesive pad directly onto the head lap area of the preceding course of tile. Apply the second pad directly onto the cap sheet, diagonally across from the first pad. Be sure that the anchor lug and a portion of the pan are embedded in the adhesive. You can maximize the contact area to the anchor lug by adjusting the adhesive pad location. When setting tile, angle the tile forward past the adhesive pad and drag the tile into the adhesive before setting it down. This prevents the adhesive from being exposed on the face of the previous course. The medium profile tile installation we're demonstrating also uses a metal leaf closure. The operating instructions and maintenance booklet details the method for an installation with a raised fascia. Like the low profile tile installation, tile bond adhesive pads are one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high, except for the first pad of each tile in the first course. Apply a half inch wide by six inch long adhesive strip to the cap sheet at the butt of tile under the pan of the tile on the overlock side. Then place a one inch high by two inch wide by six inch long pressure treated wood starter strip into the adhesive to adhere it to the cap sheet. Dispense a larger one and a half inch wide by six inch long by one inch high pad directly onto the wood starter strip. This larger pad size helps withstand increased forces placed on the eave tiles. Don't block the drainage holes with the adhesive. Maximize the contact area to the tiles pan portion by adjusting the wood starter strip and adhesive placement. Apply the second pad about one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high directly onto the cap sheet diagonally across from the first pad. Be sure that the anchor lug and pan portion are embedded in the adhesive. Apply the first adhesive pad directly onto the headlap area of the preceding course of tile. Apply the second pad directly onto the cap sheet diagonally across from the first pad. Be sure that the anchor lug and a portion of the pan are embedded in the adhesive. You can maximize the contact area to the anchor lug by adjusting the adhesive pad location. This roof deck also has a metal leaf closure. See the operating instructions for installation method with a raised fascia. Tile bond adhesive pads are one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high, except for the first pad of each tile in the first course. 
The application method for high profile tiles has a few differences from low and medium profile tiles. Apply a half inch wide by six inch long adhesive strip to the cap sheet at the butt of the tile, under the pan of the tile, on the underlock side. Adhesive placement for flat and low profile tiles is on the overlock side. Then, place a one inch high by two inch wide by six inch long pressure treated wood starter strip into the adhesive to adhere it to the cap sheet. Dispense a larger one half inch wide by six inch long by one inch high pad directly onto the wood starter strip. This larger pad size helps withstand increased forces placed on the eave tiles. Don't block the drainage holes with the adhesive. Maximize the contact area to the tile's pan portion by adjusting the starter strip and adhesive placement. Apply the second pad about one half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high at the head of the tile directly onto the cap sheet on the same underlock side of the tile as the first pad. Both adhesive pads should be on the same underlock side of the tile. Be sure that the anchor lug and pan portion are embedded in the adhesive. Apply the first adhesive pad one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high directly onto the valley portion of the headlap of the preceding course. Apply a second same size pad ahead of tile directly onto the cap sheet. The anchor lug and a portion of the pan must be embedded in the adhesive. Both adhesive pads should be on the same underlock side of the tile. Adjust the adhesive pad location to maximize the contact area to the anchor lug. All three types of tiles can also be installed using a batten strip. Medium profile tiles are being installed on this roof. Apply the first adhesive pad directly onto the headlap area of the preceding course of tile. Apply the second pad directly onto both the cap sheet and batten strip diagonally across from the first pad. Be sure that the anchor lug and a portion of the pan are embedded in the adhesive. You can maximize the contact area to the anchor lug by adjusting the adhesive pad location. During any tile installation, we recommend that you confirm the contact area by checking one tile per square. Do this by lifting and examining the tile after it has been set. An adhesive pad one and a half inches wide by four inches long by one inch high, when compressed, should expand to a contact area of two by five inches. A contact area of approximately 10 square inches per pad is required. Pad dimensions can be changed to accommodate the differences in tile configurations, as long as the adhesive contact area is not reduced. Installation of hip and ridge tiles is the same for low, medium, and high profile tiles. The first step is to attach a pressure treated hip or ridge board to the granulated cap sheet by applying a half inch wide bead of tile bond along the entire length of the board or the granulated cap sheet. Next, toenail or use screws to penetrate a minimum of three quarters of an inch to hold the board in place until the adhesive sets. To set the hip and ridge tiles, apply a one and a half inch wide by one inch high adhesive bead along the entire length of the board and set the tile into the adhesive. Finally, confirm the adhesive contact by lifting one tile per board before the adhesive sets. At the end of the day, follow these steps to store the kit. Turn the cylinder valve clockwise to the off position when the kit is not in use. Don't empty the adhesive from the hose. This allows the dispenser and hose to stay pressurized. Don't clean the dispenser or nozzle and never use solvent. The cured adhesive left in the nozzle protects the dispenser from setting up during storage. The tile bond dispenser is reusable. Once the dispenser is activated, it has a useful life of approximately 72 hours. Adhesive may harden in the dispenser if it's not activated over longer periods of time. Under normal conditions, it should work on up to three units throughout the day. When you've completely emptied a tile bond unit, detach the hose and immediately attach it to a new unit. To reuse tile bond the next day, clear the cured adhesive plug from the nozzle tip. Don't use solvent. Turn the nozzle counterclockwise half a turn and remove it from the dispenser. 
Insert a screwdriver or other similar object through the nozzle to remove the plug. Put the nozzle back on the gun. Shake the unit vigorously for 15 seconds. Turn the cylinder valve counterclockwise, a half to one full turn. Pull the trigger until the adhesive starts flowing from the nozzle. If the adhesive has cured in the dispenser and you are unable to clear it out, replace with a new tile bond dispenser. Tile bond is tack free in five to 15 minutes. High temperature and humidity conditions will speed up this process. Tile must be placed into the adhesive pad within four minutes of dispensing. After tile bond is fully cured, approximately four hours, check for any areas where it may be exposed to sunlight. These areas must be coated with an approved elastomeric coating or pointed up with mortar to avoid discoloration of the adhesive. Code approval requires an applicator to be trained and licensed prior to the use of tile bond. Tile bond applicator license applications are available from our technical department, sales representatives, or approved distributors. To qualify for a license, you must successfully complete the following requirements. Watch this instructional video. Read and understand the tile bond operating instructions and maintenance booklet. Read and understand the anchor sheet fastening tables in the kit. Complete a hands-on application of tile bond and be able to operate a kit. After successful completion of the above requirements, Flexible Products Company will forward to you your tile bond applicator license. If you have any questions about tile bond, please call our technical department toll free at 800-800-3626. As always, Flexible Products has been serving the roofing industry for many years. You may be familiar with InstaStick professional roofing adhesive used to attach insulation boards to a commercial roof deck. InstaStick replaces mechanical fasteners to avoid the noisy drilling and roof penetrations associated with mechanically attached insulation. Another roofing product made by Flexible Products is Roof Pack. Contractors use Roof Pack to expedite a temporary night tie-off. Using Roof Pack allows you to spend more time on your roofing system and less time and expense in preparing and installing a temporary night seal. Frock Pack is used for roof repair and pitch pocket filling. InstaSeal is used to seal penetrations in the building envelope to prevent air infiltration. At Flexible Products Company, it begins with an idea, an innovative way to answer a question before it's asked. Today, thousands of important items are the result of Flexible Products' innovative thinking. Flexible Products, where innovative ideas become flexible solutions.